you're watching clips made with one 2.2 a new open source video model that's completely free and you can actually use it right now what's special about it is that it handles camera motion and subject movement really well it keeps things consistent across the video and it understands your prompts with more detail so in this video we're gonna see how it compares to the current leading model available in the market how you can start using it today inside comfy ui and how to run it even if your gpu has low vram before we jump into how to use it let's quickly look at how one 2.2 compares to something like veo 3 which is still one of the top video models out there now of course veo is paid one is free so that alone is a big deal but what's interesting is how close one gets in certain areas one of the first things i noticed is how well it handles prompt details for example i had a scene with two characters and I wanted one of them to have a silver coat with a glowing blue emblem on the back. One 2.2 actually got the detail right. Veo 3 on the other hand placed it in front and on the t-shirt instead of the coat. One 2.2 also did a better job rendering text in the background. It didn't spell it correctly on both signs but it was there and Veo 3 completely skipped it. Both models are great at temporal consistency, keeping things stable across frames. They both handle reflection pretty well too but when it comes to physics i feel like veo is more reliable overall one can be a bit hit or miss depending on the scene now for stylized outputs like 3d animation or painting styles veo does usually look better but the downside is veo is super strict with content policy it will block anything that sounds remotely like it's copyrighted or violent one 2.2 being open source doesn't have those kind of limits so you can experiment way more freely so while veo definitely has the edge in some areas one 2.2 is free accessible and still really capable so now let's look at how to actually use it if you haven't installed comfy ui on your computer yet just head over to comfyui.org here you will see that it works on both windows and mac but it's optimized for nvidia gpus and certain apple silicon chipsets but if you're on older hardware or something less powerful no worries i will show you an alternative later in the video in my case i'm on windows with an nvidia gpu so i'll go ahead and select that then just open the downloaded file to start the installation as you can see it automatically detected my gpu click next here you can choose a custom install directory i've already made a folder on my desktop so i will use that then click next i don't have any previous installation of comfy ui so i'll confirm that and continue make sure to enable automatic updates and usage metrics then click install give it a couple of minutes once it's done comfy ui will launch automatically the first thing you will see is the default text to image workflow but to use one 2.2 we need to load a different one. Go to workflow, browse templates. Then on the left hand side, choose video. You will notice there are three 1.2.2 workflows. The first two use 14B versions of both text to video and image to video models. These give you much better video quality, as you will see in a bit, but they also require more resources. I would only recommend using these if your GPU has at least 24 gigabytes of VRAM. The third one uses the 1.2.2 5B model. This one is lighter and can run on GPUs with as little as 8 gigabytes of VRAM. It can do both text and image to video, but we will see how the video quality compares to the 14B models. To check if your computer can run any of these workflows, open the start menu, then look for the run app, open that and type in dxdiag, hit enter, that will open a window with your system specs. Go to the display tab, here you will see your GPU info. As you can see, I've got an NVIDIA RTX 4090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. All right, let's start with the text to video workflow. When you click on it, you will get a window telling you that a few models are missing. There is a text encoder, a VAE, and two separate text to video models. You will need to download all of the models first, 
Once that's done, you will see two different model nodes and that's because one 2.2 generates videos in two passes. First, it uses the high noise model to build the rough structure. Then the low noise model comes in to refine the details. This two model architecture is what gives one 2.2 a more stable and higher quality look compared to previous versions. Now let's scroll down to the video size node. This one is really important. One 2.2 works well with the default resolution but keep in mind, the higher you go, the more VRAM and time you will need to generate. Personally, I found a sweet spot at 960 by 512. It's 16 by 9 ratio and gives me good quality without slowing things down too much. Next is the length input. This controls how many frames your video will have. One 2.2 works best at 81 frames. You can go lower you will get a shorter video, but I wouldn't recommend going any higher. Since one 2.2 runs at 16 frames per second, 81 frames gives you a video that's about 5 seconds long. Right here in the prompt box, you can describe what kind of scene you want to generate. I recommend writing at least 3 sentences. One 2.2 really shines when your prompt is longer and more detailed. Here is a simple one I wrote. It describes the subject, a golden retriever, the outfit, a yellow raincoat, the action the subject is doing, the environment, and the camera movement. You will also notice there are two K sampler nodes in the workflow. The first one is for the high noise model, and the second is for the low noise model. The two settings you should pay attention to are steps. This affects the quality and detail. The higher it is, the better the result, but it will also take longer to generate. CFG affects how strongly the model follows your prompt. You can usually leave this at default, but feel free to experiment. There is a lot more to these settings and I will make a deeper dive video on my Patreon. I will leave a link in the description, so feel free to check it out. But for now, the defaults are totally fine. Once you're done with your settings, go ahead and click run to start generating. ComfyUI will go through the nodes one by one and when it's done, your video will show up right here in the preview node. And as you can see, the realism and overall quality are really good. The camera movement, the detail in the fur, even the way the raincoat reacts to the dog's movement, all of it looks really clean. What impressed me most is the reflections and water physics. And hey, if you're finding this helpful so far, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I make a lot of tutorials like this one, breaking down AI workflows and creative stuff in a way that's actually easy to follow. Now if you want to check how long it took to generate, go to the top right of the screen, click this little icon. On my machine it took around 7 minutes per pass, so about 14 minutes total for both the high noise and low noise stages. Yeah, it's a bit long but you can bring the time down a lot by lowering the resolution. Of course the quality will take a hit but I will show you the tools I use to upscale these low quality videos to higher resolution in just one minute. But before that I want to test how well one 2.2 responds to more detailed prompts and specific movements. So I'm going to use the same scene as before, but this time I will write a prompt that makes the dog turn into a narrow alley instead of just walking straight towards the camera. So it's gonna be a shift in both the scene and the camera angle. I'll skip ahead to the results so we can have a look. And yeah, it's super clear. One 2.2 is actually really good at changing camera angles and subject direction in the middle of a shot. That's something older versions struggled with, but here it feels more fluid and dynamic, and that's a huge improvement. The prompt was able to build a full mini scene, and it stayed consistent the whole time. Same dog, same raincoat, same lighting. Here's another example. I made a video of a cheetah running at full speed, then stopping and looking at the camera. That's exactly what I asked for in the prompt, and it delivered. Now let's look at a brighter scene. The fingers look clean, the hair reacts to the wind, and his jacket and outfit move naturally. It just feels very realistic overall. One 2.2 also handles multiple subjects really well. What's cool in this other example is the physics. The baby panda reacts to the ground, bouncing and tipping over like it's struggling to stand. Meanwhile, the big panda moves slowly and you can actually feel its weight on the ground. I also noticed that underwater shots look pretty decent. Another thing 1.2.2 does well is facial expressions. It understands emotions in your prompt and it reflects that pretty well in the subject's face and body language. Alright, now let's check out the image to video workflow. Just like before, you will be prompted to download a few models when you load it for the first time. So go ahead and do that. 
The workflow looks very similar to text to video. You still have the high noise and low noise models. The main difference is this. You need to upload a starting image, which will be used as the base for the video generation. I have this helicopter image, which I generated with Mid Journey. It's a top down shot with a busy street in the background. So a lot of little details. And I already know these fine details are probably going to get distorted in the output, but I'm mostly curious how it handles motion, especially the camera movement and the helicopter propellers. So let's see what happens. In terms of video size and length, they work exactly the same as the text to video workflow. Just make sure the aspect ratio matches your original image. Prompting here is a little different. You don't need to describe the subject or the colors or all the fine details. That stuff is already in your image. Instead, just focus on describing motion. Things like how the subject should move, how the camera should move, or how the environment expands. I'm gonna run this helicopter scene without messing with the K sampler settings, just for testing. And yeah, like I expected, the tiny background details, the buildings, the traffic, stuff far in the distance they got a bit messy that's normal but what really impressed me is how well it handled motion the camera moves exactly how i described in the prompt the helicopter shifts slightly while moving just like a real one would and the propellers move with realistic motion blur which looks really good i noticed this model works especially well with close-ups and shots with good lighting and clear subjects what i love about this image to video model is that the look of the original image is preserved throughout the video the model understands the scene well enough to fill in the blanks and extend the background without breaking the original look. So you can use this for adding subtle movement to pictures, create advertising videos, or even visual effects since it's also good at adding new elements into your scene. Now let's take a look at the Lighter 5B workflow. This one uses a combined model that supports both text to video and image to video in a single workflow. You can write a prompt to generate a video or you can enable the load image node by hitting Ctrl B. This model is a lot lighter than the 14B versions, so you can safely use higher resolutions. I'm going with 1024 by 576, but feel free to go higher. It should run just fine, even if you only have eight gigabytes of VRAM. The key difference here is that this model was trained to generate at 24 frames per second. So if you want a five second video, you will need to go up to 121 frames. Prompting here works the same way as before, both for text and image inputs. But honestly, the quality is just not even close to what you get with the 14B models. The motion is more limited and the videos feel a bit stiff. Even when I tried close-up subjects or scenes that should be easy to animate, the results just didn't hold up. Same thing for image to video. If your input is complex like this one, the output doesn't look great. But again, that's expected. The 5B is a much smaller model. The one big advantage here is speed. This video, for example, took less than two minutes to generate. So if you're just experimenting or you wanna try stuff quickly without stressing your machine, it's a great tool to play with. There might also be a better way to prompt using this model to get more out of it. That's something I would like to experiment with a bit more. Now, one thing I wanna show you real quick, especially if you're new to Comfy UI, is where to find your output videos. Go to your Comfy UI installation folder and look for a folder called output. Inside that, you will see a folder called video, and that's where all your 1.2.2 videos are saved. As I mentioned earlier, the biggest challenge with this model is definitely the generation time. I tested a few lower resolutions to see how far I can drop without sacrificing too much quality. I usually stick to 960 by 512, but if I want to render faster, I will go down to 832 by 480, then upscale using Topaz Video AI. All you need to do is drag and drop your video into Topaz Video AI and click start editing. I usually upscale to either 1080p or 4K, depending on what I need. You can pick that from the output resolution list. Each AI model inside Topaz is a bit different. For AI generated videos, I usually go with the Raya model. You can also enable frame interpolation, 
really useful if your video was rendered at a low frame rate like 16 fps here for example i set it to interpolate to 24 frames per second using the apollo model topaz will just fill in the extra frames to make the motion feel smoother you can also adjust the export settings by default it exports as prores but i usually switch it to h264 and set the container to mp4 for better compatibility once you're happy with the settings just click quick export and you're good to go on my machine the upscaling usually takes about a minute the details are way sharper and the overall image just looks cleaner and it doesn't feel over sharpened or weird which is why i love using this tool so much it's not free but for me it's been worth it and i use it all the time in my projects now if you don't have the right hardware to run any of these workflows on your machine there are a couple of solid online alternatives the first one is think diffusion it's a cloud-based platform that lets you run comfy ui entirely online you can pick from different machines and they even have an option with 48 gigabytes of vram which is great for heavier workflows like 1 2.2 once you start a machine you will get the same comfy ui interface with all the nodes and templates ready to go just like running it locally and yes the generation speed is much faster than what i get locally now if you want something even easier like way less clicking no nodes just simple inputs check out open art they recently added one 2.2 support along with other models like veo3 and kling ai you can choose either text to video or image to video set your resolution and even add sound or speech to your generated videos it's one of the most beginner friendly tools out there super clean ui and really easy to use the output quality is the same as if you run 1 2.2 locally but the trade-off is you don't get as much control as you do in comfy ui also keep in mind open art uses a credit based system so it's not a free platform but the good news is i've worked with both open art and think diffusion in the past and i've got some sweet deals for you you will find discount codes and sign up offers for both platforms in the description box so definitely check those out if you're planning to use them and as always stay creative and i'll see you in the next video peace